We're open for questions. Jason. Jason Lloyd, The Athletic. Ty, the situation you were thrown into last year and everything, the whirlwind that you walked into and going to the finals, I'm just wondering now that you've had a full year with this team and really had a chance to put your stamp on it, how, for you personally, does this feel any different than last year? How does this compare to, to last year at this point? Um, I thought um, last year, you know, just everything happened so fast. Um, really didn't get a chance to you know, really soak it all in. I mean, it just happened so fast. And, you know, you get higher the next day you got a game. And it just, you know, kind of went from there. Um, this year, I thought the season really went by fast, you know, the regular season. Um, but, you know, for me, I just thought that we just we stuck with it. We hit a lot of tough patches this season, you know, throughout the course of the season, a lot of injuries. And um, just, you know, this this team is a, it's a crazy team, you know, and we just – they just stay resilient all year. Um, um, got to the playoffs, you know, and uh, we really stepped our game up. I thought defensively, you know, throughout this whole playoff series, I mean, through this whole playoff run, we've been really good. And um, as far as the difference, you know, really no difference. Dave. Dave, you've been on ESPN tied. Some people in your locker room downplayed the significance of a rivalry between the Cavs and the Warriors, but you embraced it, you accepted it. How much have the Warriors been on your mind, your coaching staff mind, your players' mind as you go into the first ever trilogy in NBA Finals history? Well, like I said before, I mean, of course I watch every game because I'm a basketball junkie. And, um, you know, they've been playing great. And But you can't get too far ahead of yourself. And, you know, you saw that in game three at home, you know, versus Boston. You know, they're a tough team. You know, they're greatly coached. And um, they have a lot of tough players. And so you just can't look ahead and start thinking and game planning for Golden State, you know, as great as they are. You know, you still have to take care of your business. And now that we've done that, um, now we can move on, turn the page, and now we can start focusing on Golden State and getting ready. But um, to be honest, I, you know, didn't do any, not one prep for Golden State yet, you know, because I really believe that this team is a good team. And, you know, I didn't want to look too far ahead. And, you know, as of tonight, I'll get started. Joe. Joe Barton, com. I, I was going to ask how long you enjoy this one um, before you look ahead to the Warriors. I enjoy everything. I enjoy every win, and um, this is a this is a big step for us. I mean, especially when we what we went through all season, and um, you know we were doubted throughout the regular season, you know, all year. So um, to come back and do what we did to go twelve and one in the playoffs, um, to be playing good basketball. Um, I'm very happy, and I'm going to enjoy it until we play Golden State, you know. And so um, with that being said, you know, like I said, tonight I'll start my prepping, and uh, we'll get it ready and see what happens. Front row. Uh, Coach Bob Tron from the Citizen. Um, if I can go back to the last previous game um, when LeBron got his fourth foul, did you have, in comparing to how you feel now, do you, what were you thinking, and were you worried about the – resiliency of the team at that point and how, how it might all come out? Um, no, I mean, we have two other All-Stars in Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. And, um, you know, Kyrie did a great job of scoring the basketball to keep us afloat. And Kevin rebounded the basketball and scoring also. And, you know, LeBron getting three fouls, either he'd have went out with 10 minutes to go in the third, I mean, in the second quarter, or he went out with six with four fouls. So the fourth foul is not really significant, you know. I mean, he was going out either way. So if you take him out with three, he's out with ten minutes to go in the second quarter. If you take him out with four, he's out with six minutes. So um, the way we were playing, you know, the way Boston was playing, they were, you know, playing really well. And I thought I should keep him on the floor. But when he got his fourth foul, um, our team did a great job of just, you know, showing confidence in themselves and um, holding it down until he got back. Marla. Marla Rodney, our Akron Beacon Journal. Could the big three be playing better than they are right now? Yes. <laughs> Stay up front. Dave. Mike Petralia, WEEI, Boston. Um, Ty, uh, just wondering, um, Brad talked about how the shot making of Kyrie in the third quarter just ended him ended the Celtics and essentially their playoff run. What were your thoughts of, of the shots he was making to start that second half? Um, that's what he does. I mean, if you look back, you know, at game four, he did the same thing. LeBron went out to 
you know, make shots, the shots that he made, and to go one-on-one, um, being one of the best ISO players that we have in this league, um, those are shots he can make. Those are shots that he takes. And um, we just need him to be aggressive at all times, whether he's being aggressive to make the right pass or being aggressive to score the basketball. And that's what we need him to do for this team to be successful. Dave. Ty, what can you say about LeBron making seven straight finals and then also that streak and the amount of work that's gone into that? How does that cause you to manage him as a coach? I don't understand the question. Do you have to uh, give him periodic rest throughout the course of a regular season in order for him to be able to perform to get back to the final stage? Yeah, I mean, throughout the you know course of the season, just, you know, we really rarely practice anyway, you know, so just give him days off of practice. Um, certain games, when it's four games and five nights, you know, we got to be smart with that. So, um, you know, he usually tells us when his body's not feeling right or, you know, his, you know, Mike Mancias comes and tells us when his body's not feeling right. So, um, for the most part, you know, he's very durable. And when it's time to give him rest, we got to give him rest because, like you said, these situations, seven straight finals, you know, playing into June every single season. So, um, got to be very, you know, very smart about that. Last question down front. Uh, Ty, uh, did the play of Darren tonight characterize the way you, the veteran team and the championship quality of your team, the way you challenge each other? Yeah, I mean, D. Will was great, you know. Um, coming in off the bench and scoring the ball the way he scored the basketball, shooting the ball well, and just playing confident. And um, that's what you get from a veteran who's been an all-star, you know, been a max player, you know, a couple times. And um, that's why we went and got him, you know, for situations like this, big stage, big moments, and he produced. And um, that's why it's great to have veterans like that on your team. Thanks, everybody.